Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 14 of the chapter Equilibrium. In part 12 and 13, we have been discussing the applications of the equilibrium constant. In part 12, I told you how we can use the equilibrium constant to predict the extent of a reaction. And in part 13, I told you how you can use equilibrium constant to predict the direction of a reaction if it is not at equilibrium at a certain instant. And you know the concentrations of the reactants and products in that moment. The third application of equilibrium constant is that it helps you to calculate the concentrations at equilibrium, the concentrations of the products or the reactants at equilibrium. You know, we have actually done these numerical problems in the previous parts. And I would encourage you to watch the previous parts to uh, just have a hang or have an idea of what I'm going to explain right now. But in this video, it's actually just a compilation or a revision of what we have done in previous parts while solving a few numerical problems. Yet, let us categorize the five steps and understand how we arrive at equilibrium concentrations just by knowing the equilibrium constant. What do we do for this? It is like solving a numerical problem or a mathematical problem. We first write down a balanced chemical equation. The first step is that you write down the balanced chemical equation with proper stoichiometric coefficients under the conditions. Then you make a table of concentrations under the equation. And when you make a table of concentrations, now I've taken an example here, a question which is question 7.9 of your textbook. It is the solved example and according to this I've written the equation. I'll come to the problem just now but let me just tell you the steps first. So after writing down the concentrations of the different the reactants and the products under the equation then we what are the concentrations that we want to write? We want to write the initial concentrations that what did we start with? Did we start with the concentration of the uh, reactant or did we start with the concentrations of the products? So what were the initial concentrations? We first write that. Then the second step is we again see what is the change in concentration going to be when the reaction comes to equilibrium. And the third concentration that we write is the equilibrium concentrations. To explain this, we'll be taking this example and you'll understand it better. Now, for example, if you have whatever is the concentration A of a reactant and we assume that uh, if A moles per liter was the concentration and out of it X moles per liter dissociated, if we are talking of the reactant, to form, to or reacted to give us the product, then what would the concentration of the reactant be at the equilibrium? If the initial concentration when you started, it was A, and X amount of it reacted to acquire equilibrium, then at equilibrium, what is the amount of PCl5 left? It will be A minus X, right? So using a variable like X, we determine, we assume that one of the reactants, X moles of it or moles per liter of it is dissociating or is reacting. And assuming that X and using the stoichiometry of the reaction, we then start placing and calculating the concentrations of the other reactants and products. So we use X as the concentration of one of the substances that reacts on going to equilibrium. And then we use the stoichiometry to calculate the others with respect to that amount X. Now, let me just explain this. Look at this reaction. You have one mole of PCl5, which reacts to give you one mole of PCl3 and one mole of chlorine. So if X moles of PCl5 reacted, then how many moles of PCl3 and Cl2 will be formed? If one gave us one and one, then X moles will give us X and X. So using that value X, you will say that at equilibrium, the concentrations of PCl3 and Cl2 would be X. So that is how we relate it to the stoichiometry and in terms of X, we talk of the concentrations of all the reactants and products. Then the third step is that we substitute the equilibrium concentrations in the equation for the reaction to solve the value for X. This I'll do just when I solve this problem. You might get a quadratic equation and if you get a quadratic equation, we use the formula for the quadratic equation. 
to get the value of x. Once we arrive at the value of x, we substitute that value of x and we get all the equilibrium concentrations. And that is the fourth step. And the fifth step is that you can verify your answer, you can check your answer by putting all these concentrations that you have calculated in the equation and see if it makes sense, if it is in the same ratio. So this, these are the five steps that you would follow in order to arrive at the equilibrium concentrations of uh, a particular reaction if you know the equilibrium constant. So the question is, the three, three moles of PCl5 kept in one liter <coughs> closed reaction vessel was allowed to attain equilibrium at 380 Kelvin. You have to calculate the composition of the mixture at equilibrium and Kc is given to us. The value of Kc is given to us and this is the reaction that we have to deal with. The reaction is PCl5 gives you PCl3 plus Cl2. So what is the first step? Right balanced equation. We've done that. Second step is we make a table of concentrations under it. So we make a table of concentrations under it. What does it tell us? That 3 moles of PCl5. So what was the initial concentration? Initial concentration of PCL5 was 3 moles, right? 3 moles of PCL5 kept in a 1 liter, one liter uh, closed reaction vessel was allowed to attain equilibrium at 380 Kelvin. Okay, so that's the only concentration that we know. And initially, the concentrations of PCL3, since it has not reacted, the, react, uh, the concentrations of PCL3 and Cl2 are 0 moles. Understandable. Now, what are the concentrations, the equilibrium concentrations? Let us assume that x moles of PCl5 reacted before arriving at the equilibrium. So at equilibrium, now x moles of PCl5 has reacted. So what is the concentration of PCl5 at equilibrium? It is 3 minus x. You get me? It would be 3 minus x moles. Because x moles has reacted, the total number of moles was 3, therefore x out of it has reacted. So what you're left with is 3 minus x. And looking at the stoichiometry of the reaction, we see that if 1 mole of PCl5 reacts, 1 mole of PCl3 and 1 mole of chlorine are formed. So if x moles of PCl5 reacts, x moles of PCl3 and x moles of chlorine would be formed, logically. Now, we've been given the equilibrium constant. And what is the equation for equilibrium constant, which is equal to 1.8, is equal to the concentrations of the products, that is the concentration of PCl3 into concentration of chlorine upon raised to the power of so their stoichiometric coefficients, which are 1, so we don't care about it, PCl5, that's it. And in terms of x, let us now substitute it. So 1.8, that is Kc, which is equal to 1.8, would become equal to, put the value of PCl3 is x, value of Cl2 is x, and the value of PCl5 is 3 minus x. Or you could say it is x squared, the x into x can be written as x squared upon 3 minus x, right? So let us solve this, is equal to 1.8. Now if we solve this, we get that 1.8 into 3 minus x is equal to x squared, right? So 1.8 into 3 is 5.4 minus 1.8x would be equal to x squared. Now, we'll bring this also to this side or take these that side and we get x squared. We are bringing all of them to one side my plus 1.8x minus 5.4 is equal to 0. Now do you see? You've got an equation of the type ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to uh, 0. It's a quadratic equation that you obtain. And whenever you get an equation which is of this kind, that is like a quadratic equation, that is ax squared plus bx plus c, is equal to 0, how do you solve it for the value of x? To solve it for the value of x, you get x would be equal to minus b plus minus under root b square minus 4ac 
upon twice a. Right? This is how you solve a quadratic equation, isn't it? So we're now looking at this equation. Let us see what is a. A is 1. What is b? b is 1.8. And what is c? c is minus 5.4. So using these values, we find out the value of x. When we find out the value of x, we would get what is b? Minus 1.8 minus of b. b is plus 1.8. So it will be minus plus minus under root b is again 1.8 square minus 4 into a is 1 and c is 5.4 minus 5.4. Right, and the square root of this upon twice of a, and a is 1, so it will be upon 2. When you solve this quadratic equation, you get the value of x, and that value comes out to be equal to 1.59. When you solve this equation, you will get the value of x, and the value of x would be equal to 1.59. Now, what did we do? We solved for x, the third step. We substituted the concentrations in the quadratic equation we obtained it, we solved it and we got the value of x. Now, what does this value of x mean? What is x? x was the concentration of PCl3, it was the concentration of Cl2. So at equilibrium, our aim was to find out the equilibrium concentrations or the composition of the mixture at equilibrium. So what would the different concentrations be? The concentration of PCl3 and PCl, uh, sorry, and chlorine is equal to X, which means it is equal to 1.59 moles per liter. Molar solution because it was a one liter vessel. And um, what is the concentration of PCl5? PCl5 was 3 minus X, which is equal to 3 minus 1.59 molar solution. And this will come out to be equal to 1.41 moles or molar solution. So this is how using equilibrium constant we can arrive at the concentrations, the equilibrium concentrations of the components of the reaction mixture. So this was the third application of equilibrium constant. With this I'll end this video. If you found it helpful please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.